When we think about the protocol stack and the core protocols that run on the internet, remember that we divided the stack um, in a somewhat useful way. So we can talk about the core internet protocol suite, which consists of TCP IP, and then above the core protocol suite, there's a bunch of application uh, protocols, things like HTTP, um, FTP, then these are things that use these lower level protocols. So the lower level protocols are typically implemented in software on the device that is difficult to change. So when you install a Windows machine or a Mac or an Ubuntu machine, you get an implementation of TCP IP that's maintained by whoever made the operating system for your computer. And so if you want to change that, you have to talk to them and that's a very slow process. On the other hand, there's a lot of innovation in the application protocol space that's enabled by the fact that I don't have to get anyone's permission to install and use a new application level protocol. If I want to run a new piece of software that runs on top of TCP IP and implements its own custom protocol, I can do that. All I need to get you to do is install some new software, but I certainly don't have to talk to anybody at Windows or at Apple or whatever. Now, you might wonder, given this division, is there any sort of interesting innovation or uh, work going on at, at the sort of core protocol level? Because the core protocols, as I pointed out, are very, very difficult to change. But it turns out that there's actually some interesting work going on in this space right now. And that work is enabled by uh, something, which is that um, there's another part of the core protocol suite. So remember that IP provides this best effort, reliable, uh, sorry, best effort packet delivery, not reliable, not ordered. Um, and what I do to get reliability and ordering is I add TCP. But what if I don't want reliability and ordering? Well, I have another choice. The other choice is something called UDP. UDP is the Universal Datagram Protocol. Unlike TCP, UDP does not do reliability, UDP does not do ordering, and UDP doesn't do any sort of congestion control. So those features are missing from TCP. UDP does preserve some of the addressing that TCP adds to IP, which is important to allow uh, services to work over the internet. So if I build things on top of UDP, and UDP is part of the core protocol suite, it's implemented all over the place. If I build things on top of UDP, I can actually experiment with new ways of providing some of the features that TCP provides, things like reliability. You might say, I have a better idea for how to enable reliable data transfer, and if you want to experiment with that, you can deploy it on top of UDP. Because UDP you can think of as just a very, very thin layer on top of the IP protocol protocol itself, which is providing best ever packet delivery. So is this going on today? The answer is yes. Um, the reason for this is interesting. So TCP as a protocol has some well-known problems. And those problems particularly affect its performance in certain types of environments. Um, and those are types of environments where we see more and more people actually coming online. So people that have very slow, very high latency connections to the internet, maybe in developing countries, those connections don't necessarily always run very well over TCP. So there are there, uh, one of the sort of more high profile experimentations with the new transport protocol that's built on top of TCP is something called QUIC. Um, so QUIC is an application level protocol. It's built on top of TCP. Let me see if I can spell it correctly. It's Q U I C QUIC. So QUIC is a, a, a protocol that's being developed at Google. It's designed to experiment with new ways to provide some of the features that TCP provides um, without using TCP. So what's interesting about the fact that Google is doing this is that Google controls, in many cases, both sides of a lot of the connections online. So let's say you've installed Google's browser, Chrome, which is pretty popular. And then you go to a Google website like Gmail or Google Drive. At that point, Google wrote the client that's running on your server, Chrome, and they control the server that Chrome is talking to. And so that gives them a chance to roll out quick. Let me show you that, and you may not know this is already happening. In fact, if you use Chrome and you use sites like Gmail, you're probably already using this new transport protocol. Let me show you that that's happening here. So I have a little plugin um, that I've installed for Chrome, and that plugin will tell me when Quick is enabled. And this little red um, lightning bolt up here, which is probably difficult to see, but let me click on it. Um, 
this will tell this tells me that on this particular site quick is enabled and so what this means is that I'm using the Chrome browser um, and I was browsing to a Gmail here in Google Drive and on both of those sites Google has decided to try their new transport protocol on me, which is kind of interesting. Um, and so, so there is still innovation going on in this space. It's pretty interesting. Um, and this is one example.